All right, so this is just really quick to talk about how to select and manipulate geometry uh, within Houdini. <clears throat> you know, the question becomes, you know, how do I isolate, you know, maybe a, a, a piece of a shell of a connected piece of geometry? And with Houdini, you know, where Maya, everything comes in, and it's, it's a single object and it's organized into, you know, something that would resemble more like this, which is like a group, you know, uh, you have groups down to a transform and then under that transform is a shape node and that is the geometry and that geometry could have, you know, connected and unconnected pieces and then, you know, you, you have to modify that in order to separate those out and it becomes its own thing in the stack in the layer stack. Houdini is very much uh, uh, the data that moves through right that so we have these different things where a group is just an attribute on a primitive or a point. Um, you know, it not necessarily an organizational structure. And so we can see here that this FBX comes in and it has a name attribute and has a shop material path attribute. So these are, it's, it's good to be mindful of these things as we go into selection uh, of our different objects. So I'm gonna come back to our scene view and I'm gonna grab our geometry picker, right? And we see up here, we have some different options here. We have uh, points, edges, primitives, or faces, as they're called in Maya. We have verts, vertices, um, which are different than points, right? So each, a point, you know, can be the corner of, you know, a single point can be the corner of four different polygons or however many different polygons, you know, n number of polygons. But each one of those polygons is going to have a vertice for each point that is separate. Um, so they're two different things. Uh, this tool here, select breakpoints, never used it, never do. And then we have our different ways of picking. We have our uh, rectangle, our lasso. We have a paint select and a laser select. I don't use any of these. I always just use this. Uh, select visible geometry only. I don't ever use that option. Select fully contained geometry only. Don't ever use that option. Uh, this is the option actually that I use the most. Um, uh, I've never used select by normal, but that's pretty cool too. So <clears throat> when we select groups, excuse me while I... Uh, clearing my throat. Select by groups, uh, when we bring this in initially, we can see that I'm still just selecting individual primitives. Um, but we can see here that there's these kind of two different groups that exist in there, and they're not really doing anything. If we come to 3D connected geometry, we'll see that all of a sudden we have all these islands that allow us to pick, and we can come through and, you know, pick these. We can either pick in the viewport and shift, you know, so we click one, and then we shift, and we click another, and it adds to that list. That's one way. Um, uh, another thing that we can do is we can pick inside of the list here and shift and control will um, add or uh, remove those selections. And so we can go through and kind of pick everything that we need um, off of this list. We can also use UV connection. So it's a different type of, it's still called island, but it's, it's forming those islands in a different way. Like, you know, we can see here that um, 3D connected geometry. See how we have kind of a nice big piece here. Those are separate. When we go to our 3D connected geometry, or sorry, our UV connected geometry, we can see now that we have kind of these little, you know, micro shells in there because the UVs on this aren't that awesome on this model. There's geometry groups, which are if you've gone through and set up groups on this, or they're, you know, where in the geometry spreadsheet, when the primitives, we'll see a group, which I can, if we come down here, we can select. Uh, we'll see, select down here, we'll see that there's a bunch of. Uh, groups that have been created. Oh, I think this might have just been deleted. So come back here. So here's this group, this camp for group. All right. So now if we come here and we select that, which they're really small. It's uh, I think it's we have to come in here and you'll see it. Um, maybe not there. Maybe I did it on the bottom here. There we go. So there's that camp for group, right? So you know, based on however many groups you have and created, you'll have a group list here. And those are going to be Houdini type groups, not not necessarily coming in from another DCC. So the way the way that Houdini deals with groups. What's really powerful here is uh, I don't ever use this um, cut geometry for UV layout is this Alembic path. So Alembic paths come in based off of the hierarchy. When you bring in an Alembic from, say, Maya, that Maya node or net, uh, outliner is saved into the geometry. Right, so each piece will tell you where it came from in Maya, and so you essentially can pick things the way you would in Maya. You have this, you know, layout of saying, "Hey, I want this, I want that." Um, you know, M Maya is very much this kind of outliner kind of idea that you have things grouped, you know, and it can't exist 
an object can't exist in two different structures. It has to, you'd have to duplicate um, cutting up geometry in order to separate them in their own groups. Houdini doesn't run like that. Houdini is, is a data stream where you, you're essentially just, you can assign, modify, you know, reassign um, all in your stack here, your node stack, um, your node chain. So um, going back to this, this is using the path attribute. You can see it says at path star. Now, this actually isn't an Alembic that I brought in. This is an FBX. And so FBX uses the name attribute, right? And this is the same thing. This is very much how it was built inside of Maya, right? So it was grouped under iPhone 11 Pro. And then you have this back cover final. And we just don't see the shape now. These are all the transforms inside of Maya. You can see these, right? So we have those. And I actually came down and on this wrangle, you'll see S, which means string at path. I'm creating an attribute, a string attribute called path on the primitives. And it equals string at shop material path. So if we go to our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that now I have this, uh, this path attribute that is based off of this shop material path. And really, uh, <laughs> I did that a while ago. I'll show you why I did that. Because in scene view, then you come here and you say Olympic path, and it's easy. It's just there. Now, the reality is, is all this is doing, both the name attribute and the Olympic path attribute aren't doing anything different from each other, other than populating this right here. So you see that it says at name. Now it says at path. So we could take this and say shop material path. Okay, and you see those things all still exist because we have this attribute shop material path. And so it gives us the ability to select based on those. Let's see if there's something here that would be interesting to pick based on. Um, probably not. Uh, but any attribute uh, for a primitive, you could plug this in here and you would see those broken out here and you could pick based on those. Uh, likewise, if you had a, a point attribute or an edge attribute that you wanted to, or a vertice attribute that you wanted to isolate and pick based on, you could pick that, you know, select your points here and then we could come and give it an attribute here. We could say at P dot Y, why not? Okay, so there we've got some, it's limiting them to integers. So based on integers, we've got some groupings, right? Uh, I don't ever, use this, but it's just a highlight that any attribute can be used for selecting. Um, and that's typically how I go about, you know, picking things inside of the viewport. I don't really do the brush select or, or things like that. I don't find myself creating groups um, based on manual selection, uh, if at all possible. The times that are that I have to manually go in and create those, like if we look at this camphor group, it's, you can see that it's a manual selection. I hate that. Um, because uh, it, it, it's just, if the geometry changes at all, then it screws up the selection. So uh, I, I don't care for that. Um, and if I was to do a, if I wanted to do a brush selection, I would actually do either a, a paint attribute or paint by paint group. Um, probably the paint attributes. I think the paint group doesn't have the recache. So if you do paint attribute, you can see if you come here to recache, you have the ability to, if the geometry changes, and I'll show you this real quick. So if we come in here and uh, where are we viewing from? Let me come down here, view off of this. So we're gonna go ahead and paint with this. We're gonna select our tool here. Uh, it's not showing right now, right? If we do this, you'll see, oh, maybe a little bit. There we go. It's giving us a view. Um, let's see if we go like this. It's because it's loading up a material. There we go. We'll turn that off. And we can see that we can paint, right? So we essentially are creating this mask attribute, which is on the points, right? So when you paint, it's always on points. And so if I needed to be a primitive attribute, I could then promote this to be a primitive attribute with an attribute promote. But the nice thing about this is now, if we come in here and we do a subdivide, and I hope this doesn't crash my file. Uh, we do a subdivide. Now, if we look at this, we see like, oh, crud. It broke everything. This is what happens when you hand select and hand paint things. If the underlying number of points or primitives or whatever you're, you're selecting changes, then obviously this is gonna change because it was these are the numbers of what it had selected. Now, the nice thing about the attribute paint is we can go over here to recache 
and we can say you can say original values i don't use that i i use resend rays and then i recache the strokes and what that'll do is it basically it in the node it has stored the path at which i laid down my paint stroke and so when i recache that it recaches that relays down that paint stroke and so if i'm trying to do things uh, selections uh, in a handsy way like this. I usually uh, will use this more when I'm doing grooming or something like that. Um, uh, I'll try to do it that way. Um, as far as like the camphor, I didn't really, you know, think of like an easy way to, you know, go through and do that selection, um, you know, and so it was, it just was what it was. Um, you know, we could come in here for selection. Uh, if you go to select, I'm using primitives and, um, Let's turn off the group select. So here I'm selecting individual faces and say I want to, uh, I want to grab this ring. Uh, you know, I didn't grab something I want. So I'm going to grab this ring again. So I'm going to click that and you see that I have it selected. And if I hit shift A and then middle mouse, it selects the ring for me. Right. So that's really handy. I use that hot key um, when I have to do stuff by hand. That's what I'm probably using the most. And then, you know, if I'm trying to do something, I'll often go like this where I just did the singular ring instead of worrying about going in and grabbing all those extra ones. Then what I would do is I would just create the let's go. I'm oh, sorry. Let's come in here. So with our mouse over the viewport type tab group and hit enter and it's going to auto populate that group. Um, if you do the tab over your node network, it won't auto populate. You have to do it over here to pick up that selection. But now that I've got that group, I'm going to do a group expand and uh, come here and I'm just gonna tell this to be base group is group six and um, oh sorry we'll call this new group and you can see here what it's grabbing is this section you can see that it stepped it out one right so here was our our group there and then this takes that group and expands it out. And we can tell it how many steps we want it to go and we can grow that selection. I love doing this kind of stuff, you know, things that are gonna allow me to have control and go back, you know, find the simplest way. And then if you think anything's gonna change, go back and make those adjustments. So that's just some quick uh, information on how to deal with um, geometry selection um, and, you know, maybe a little bit of like how do you go about dealing with groups? So hope that helps and best of luck.